Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is twenty seventh April two thousand and twenty two. Right now, I am with the eleven Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is physics five zero five four. This is Cambridge O levels of physics, and the code of the subject is five zero five four. Today, we have selected a paper uh, which is alternative to practical. We call it ATP. ATP and we also call it paper four. We have selected May June two thousand fourteen four one paper. This paper four belongs from the zone one or you can say the variant one. The time allowed for this paper is one hour and the total marks for this paper are uh, thirty marks. So let's start this paper and here we go. The question paper is coming up on your. screen so it's may june 2014 41 one hour is allowed alternative to practical the total marks are 30 so here comes the first question a student uses a voltmeter state the quantity measured with a voltmeter the voltmeter is used to measure the emf the voltmeter is used to measure the potential drop potential difference voltage drop voltage difference So you have to write only one quantity here. So here you can say I have written potential difference. So let's check the marking scheme. It says EMF potential difference voltage drop. Okay. So the next question, uh, figure one point one shows an analog voltmeter. State the reading on the voltmeter. The reading on the voltmeter is very easy to read. Okay. So let me increase the size. So you can easily check what's the reading here. So three point two, three point four, three point six, three point eight, and four. So the reading is three point six. The reading is three point six. So the reading is three point six volt. So three point six volt. Okay. So the next question. He says a school has both digital and analog voltmeter. Suggest one advantage of using a digital voltmeter rather than analog voltmeter. You see, when you use a, a digital voltmeter, uh, the readings the reading is shown, the measurement is shown on a display. So there is no chance of the parallax error, and the reading is very easy to read. So that's the answer. Okay. Digital voltmeter reading is easy to read. That's my answer. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. No parallax error. Needle does not stick. Easier to read. Measure or current easier to change range. Lower resistance. So our answer is right. Okay. So next question. The student is asked to connect three two volt cells in series with the resistor R of resistance hundred ohm. The student sets up the circuit as shown in the figure 1.2. State the reading on the voltmeter when it is connected across A and B. You see A and B. So the current comes out of the positive terminal. So here it passes from point A and point D and then goes into the resistor. When it goes from point A to point D, uh, so there is no resistor. So there will be no use of the electric energy. So whatever is the electric energy in the charges at the point A, same is the electric energy in the charges at the point D. So uh, that's why there will be no difference of electric energy per unit charge. So there will be no difference of the voltage. So if you put one connection of the voltmeter at A and the other connection at the point D, because there is no resistor between these two points. So there, the voltage drop or the voltage difference, the voltmeter will show you zero reading because the the difference of the voltage between point A and point D, there is no difference of the voltage there. Then he says A and B. So if you put a A and B, so here you have two cells and they are connected with each other correctly. So uh, their voltage will add up, their EMF will add up. So the voltmeter will show you two plus two, that will be four volt. Then he says that DC. So if you put a, a one 
terminal of the voltmeter here and the other one here connect connect the terminal with these point b and c so now this whole emf will be shown the, if you look at carefully here these two are connected correctly but this one is connected wrongly negative has been connected with the negative so these two cells they will cancel out each other so only one cell will be working and so the voltage drop across the dc will be 2 volt i hope you understand let me show you my written answer so here are the answers which i have written okay so let's have a look at the marking scheme 0 4 and 2 volt okay so the next question is r is replaced by a resistor of resistance 1000 ohm there is no change in the reading on the voltmeter across the dc explain this the reason is that there is only one resistor here so whatever is the emf of this combination that emf that voltage has to be dropped here it has to be used here because there is only one resistor in this circuit so if you replace that 100 ohm resistor with a 1000 ohm resistor the voltage drop across the DC will still be equals to the EMF of the battery. The reason is that this whole circuit has only one resistor. So all the voltage which is coming from the battery has to be used there. So the voltage drop will be equals to the EMF of the battery. So this is my answer. There is only one resistor in the circuit. It's voltage drop is equals to the emf of the battery battery has not changed you have changed the resistor from 100 to 1000 ohm but there is no change in the battery so the voltage drop across 1000 ohm will be still 2 volt that's our answer so let's have a look at the marking scheme he says depends only on the cells potential difference or voltage supplied or r increased and current decreased so the ir stays the same v equals to ir i think Okay, so let's move to the next part. A student investigates the mixing of water. The student places a beaker A of warm water on a bench. He places a laboratory thermometer in the water as shown in the figure 2.1 A. To take the reading of the thermometer, the student lifts the thermometer to the position shown in the figure 2.1 B. On the figure 2.1 B, mark the position of the student's eye when taking the reading. This is the level of the mercury, the, the eye should be, the eye of the observer should be such that the line of sight should be perpendicular. The line of sight should be perpendicular uh, to the scale from where you are taking the reading. So let me show you. So here you can see I have made that uh, eye of the observer. It's a one mark question. So here we go. Question number two, I marked level with the meniscus. So he says anyone from one meniscus is above side of the beaker or not below rim of the beaker. Okay, so next question. Explain why the student lifts the thermometer. So we lift the thermometer so he is able to see the, uh, he is, you see, he, he can directly see the level of the mercury. Here in this position, you can see the level of the mercury, the, the brinks of the beaker are above the level of the mercury. So he will not be able to directly look at the level of the mercury. So he has to lift it. Another reason can be that this thermometer, the bulb of the thermometer might be touching the uh, bottom of this glass. Once it's touching the glass, it will be it will it will note down the temperature of the glass instead of the water. We want the temperature of the water. Okay, so so the answer can be if the bulb of the thermometer is in contact with the bottom of the beaker, it will show the temperature of the glass. That's my answer. Another answer can be because the uh, the level of the mercury is its view is blocked by the the beaker so he lifts it up a little bit so that he can have a direct uh, view of the level of the mercury in the thermometer you can also write that answer 
So let's check the marking scheme. What the marking scheme has to say? Uh, so meniscus is above the side of the beaker, not below the rim of the beaker. So not looking through the side of the beaker or the condensation on the side of the beaker obscure view. So instead of the writing the answer which I wrote, because the marking scheme is not showing, instead of writing this answer which I wrote here, you are supposed to write that answer that the the view of the level of the mercury in the thermometer is is uh, blocked by the beaker. So you lift it up so that the observer can have a direct look at the level of the mercury. So change this answer. Okay, so change this answer. Okay, so we are going to the next part. And he says, uh, explain why the thermometer is not removed from the water to take the reading. Because if you will remove the thermometer, if you will take the thermometer out of the water, immediately the temperature of the water, the temperature will drop and the level of the mercury will drop. Mercury will, will contact and you will not be able to record, will contract. I don't have contact. The word is the mercury will contract it will contract and I, I forgot to write here r and you will not be able to record exact temperature of the water so that's my answer so let's uh, okay so they say the room is cooler than the water may cool due to the evaporation on the bulb temperature shown falls to room temperature will measure room temperature or air temperature okay so our answer is right then the question is the figure 2.2 shows the scale on the thermometer. State the temperature shown on the thermometer. So let's increase the size a little bit so you can see it more clearly. So what's this temperature? This is 41, 42, 43. Temperature is 43 degrees. 43 degrees. 43 degrees centigrade is the right answer, sir. The student leaves the water in the beaker A until it reaches the room temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. He then takes a large beaker B containing 150 centimeter cube of hot water at 86 degrees centigrade as shown in the figure 2.3. So this is the beaker A which has the water at room temperature and this is the beaker B which is large beaker. And it has already filled with the 150 centimeter cube of hot water. The temperature of the hot water is 86 degrees centigrade. He transfers 60 centimeter cube of the water uh, from the beaker A to beaker B and measures the new temperature of the water in the beaker B. So he, he takes 60 centimeter cube of water from here, which is at room temperature, and pour it into this beaker. And he measures what is the new temperature. So the student repeats this several times to obtain the result shown. So the student did not include the column headings in the table. On the figure 2.4, add the correct headings. So this is the volume which is adding, the volume of the added water, and this is the temperature of the water in the beaker B. So let me show you my answer. So added volume of the water. or temperature of the water. So these are the headings. So let me show you marking scheme. Volume of the water added and temperature of the water. Then he says, uh, on the figure 2.5, plot the graph of the student's results with the temperature on the y-axis. Start your axis from the values given in the figure 2.5. Draw the smooth curve of the best fit. So this is the graph. So the x-axis is starting from zero and the y-axis is starting from 30. This is a very important thing. The... So first of all, I will label the axis. The y-axis is showing temperature in degree centigrade. And on the x-axis, we are showing the volume of 
the added water. So here we have V and here we have temperature. And if you look at this temperature, zero at 0 086, when there was no water, extra water added, it was 86, so I put a dot here. And at 60, it is 62. 60, at 60, this is 62. And at 120, it is 51. 120 will be here, it's 51, okay. At uh, 180, you have 46. At 180, you have 46. At 240, you have 42. At 240, this is 240, 42, okay. At 300, you have 40. At 300, you have 40. Yeah. So this is how you will plot this graph, and then you will join them with a smooth curve of the best fit. So I've tried to make a smooth curve of the best fit. Then the question is, if you look at the marking scheme, he says X is, X is labeled quantity and unit scales linear and correct way, correct way around two centimeter equals 10 degrees centigrade, two centimeter, 50 centimeter cube. Points plotted accurately, smooth curve of the best fit. Okay, so the next part. After this, yeah. The student repeats the experiment with the same initial conditions. He transfers 40 centimeter cube of water to the beaker B each time. Use the figure 2.5 to find the temperature when a total of 80 centimeter cube is transferred. Okay, so at the temperature, 80 has been added. So this is that, 80. 80 centimeter cube water has been added. So what will be the temperature? This is 50 something. Yeah, it will be 58. It will be 58. Let's have a look at the marking scheme. 57 plus minus one. So that our answer is right. Explain why the beaker B needs to be large. You see, uh, the beaker B already has 150 centimeter cube of water, and now you are adding more water in it. 40 centimeter cube, more 40 centimeter, again 40 centimeter further added. So it has to be large so that it can have that volume of water in it. You see the beaker uh, B already has 150 centimeter cube of water. If three centimeter cube of water is added, the total volume will become 450 centimeter cube. So the beaker B has to be large. Large amount of water added reference to 450. Why, why, why this, why, you know, why I'm using the word 450? 150 is already, and for this experiment, you have to add 300 centimeter cube. So the total volume with 300 plus 150 to become 450. So that the beaker B has to be large, so it can it can contain that water. It can handle that water. Then the question is, use your graph to explain why it is not possible to continue the experiment to the point when the the water in the beaker B reach, reaches the room temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. You see, to go to the temperature of the 25 degrees centigrade, here you can see already you have added 300 centimeter cube of water and the temperature has dropped to 40. And this cooling curve has, uh, you know, the temperature drop, the rate of temperature drop has decreased. So now you have to add a lot of water to decrease its temperature from 40 to 25. More water is needed because the, this graph, its gradient is decreasing. Rate of temperature drop becomes very low. More water needed to be added. 
beaker will overflow with water. That's our answer. He said temperature drop becomes small for each 60 centimeter cube of the water. Water would fill beaker, overflow, run out of water in the beaker. A experiment takes too long. Yeah. I hope you understand. Okay. A student has five measuring cylinders. The figure 3.1 gives information about the measuring cylinder. So the cylinder A, its volume is five centimeter cube. The divisions here, the smallest division is 0 0.1 centimeter cube, its diameter is 0 0.7, and its height is, height, is, height is 12. The bigger B, its volume is 10 centimeter cube, its small division on it is 0 0.2 centimeter cube, and diameter is 1.3, and the height is 14. C, the volume is 50, the smallest division is 1 centimeter cube, the diameter is 2.6, and the height is 20. D is it has 100 centimeter cube, uh, centimeter cube capacity. Its small division on it is one centimeter cube, and its diameter is 3.1, and its height is 25. The beaker E, its volume is 250, and the smallest division on it is two centimeter cube, and the diameter is 4.2, and the height is 30. The student uses a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of a marble diameter of one centimeter, estimate the volume of the marble. You know the formula for the, in your mathematics you have studied, the formula for the sphere, the formula for the sphere is, uh, volume of the sphere is four by three pi r cube. So put those values and the radius is zero, the diameter is one centimeter. So the radius will be 0 0.5 centimeter. Just put the values and in the calculator. 4 by 3 multiply pi multiply 0 0.5 cube, and that will give you 0 0.52 centimeter cube. So the volume of uh, a single marble is 0 0.52 centimeter cube. Okay. Then, let me check the answer. 0 0.5 to 1. Our answer is right. State and explain which measuring cylinder is the best to use. Use the, you know, uh, the best will be, you know, the A cannot be used because its, diam its diameter is seven and the marble's diameter is one centimeter. So it cannot be put into the beaker, into the beaker A. The beaker B, its volume is 10 centimeter cube. And the smallest division it has is 0 0.2 centimeter cube. And its diameter is 1.3 and its height is 14. So easily the marble can be put into this beaker easily. And other, other uh, beaker C, D, E, they are very large. They can be used, but they are very large. And the smallest division on their scale is more than the volume of this. So. There's no point of using it. Beaker B is the best for measuring the volume of the marble. Its diameter is enough that marble can move into it. Its volume is enough that marble can be submerged in the water. Smallest division is 0 0.2 centimeter cube, which is uh, very sensitive. It's, it's more sensitive uh, for measuring this in the given options. B, most sensitive volume marble small has 0 0.2 centimeter cube divisions. Volume less than 10 centimeter cube would not fit into the A. A cannot be used. The student half fills the mining cylinder with water. Describe how the mining cylinder is then used to find the volume of the when the measuring cylinder is half filled with the water, find the volume of that water. Let us call it V1. Then put the marble into the water and note down what is the volume of the water now. Let's call it V2. Then subtract V1 from the V2 and that will give you the volume of the marble. Note the volume V1 of the water in the half-filled cylinder. Put marble into the cylinder. Note volume V2 
volume of the marble will be equals to V2 minus V1. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Two readings and subtract. Our answer is right. Figure 3.2 shows the water surface in the two marine cylinders. One cylinder is made up of glass and the other is made of plastic. So just two reasons why the plastic marine cylinders are often preferred to glass ones. You see the plastics marine cylinders are not fragile. The glass is very fragile. That's one reason. The next other reason can be, you can see the meniscus of the water in the glass. It has a meniscus, which is curved. And here the meniscus is flat. Plastic cylinder is less fragile. In plastic cylinder, the water has flat meniscus, which is easy to read. Okay. So we go to the next question. The next question is question number four. A student is given a plano convex lens. Plano convex lens means that one side of the lens is convex and the other side is plane. He says the figure 4.1 shows the plano convex lens. It has one curved face and one flat face. The lens is a converging lens. The student predicts that the lens has two different focal lengths, one on each side of the lens. Describe an experiment the student can perform to test this prediction. In your account, you should state an equipment used, draw a label diagram of the equipment used, describe how the equipment is used, and explain how the student checks this prediction. It's a four mark question. So let me show you. So here we have a stand. You can find that stand in your lab. And on this stand, here we have a stand which carries uh, the, the convex lens, the plano convex lens. On this stand here, I have put uh, a screen. And here we have an illuminated object. So I place them like this. And I have put a scale here. You can see this scale here. So I will move this lens forward, backward, forward, backward until I get a clear image of this object on this screen. Once I get this, then check what is the distance of the object from the lens, that's P, the distance of the image from the lens, that's Q. Then reverse the direction of this lens. Just change the direction of this lens, only, only this lens, nothing else. You will observe that the image which was very sharp and clear here, that will become blur. This means that the focal length of this side of the lens is different and the focal length of this side of the lens is different. So listen carefully. Put the lens in a holder and place it between the lamp and the screen. Move the lens left, right until a sharp image is formed on the screen. Note the distance between the lens and the screen and let me call it Q. Q. Reverse the lens in the holder. Image formed on the screen will be no more sharp and focused. This shows that both faces of the lens have a different focal length. It's a four mark question. Hopefully you understand. So the use of the object on the screen or use of the ray box and paper with the cylindrical lens show how image focused on the screen described. For example, distance from the lens to the screen varied or two rays crossing on the paper, lens reverse, correct reference to prediction. For example, no longer in the focus. Our answer is right and you will be able to secure four marks. So my dear students, we are done with this paper. So uh, my dear students, uh, today we have solved May, June 2014, a 4-1 paper. I have tried my best to explain you the concepts. And I hope that this will help you to solve the past papers of the ATP. If you find this video interesting and informative and helpful, share the link of this video onto your Facebook accounts, onto your Instagram accounts, and onto your Twitter account. Share the link of this video 
with your uh, junior students, with your senior students. And also share the link of this uh, video with your teachers. So it's a great blessing for me to be able to teach you all that. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. God bless you all.